Welcome to Snooze with Sam, everyone, and thank you for joining me for this Q&A, where I answer all of your questions. Oh, right, where do we start? Well, actually, firstly, I'd like to thank you all for, first of all, your kind comments regarding just taking a wee break. I know I've already kind of gone against my own plan by uploading the wee Halloween story, but I thought, yeah, I'd... I just wrote it that day and thought, hey, well, obviously there's no time like the present. However, like I said, I do appreciate your patience just now. There was a time a, a week or so ago, or a week or more, where outside of this there were a lot of other things going on and just trying to maintain content creation, if, for want of a better phrase, while uh, at the same time was just a bit too much to ask and I felt myself well, genuinely, there was one day I went 24 hours without going to sleep. So that just kind of, without being dramatic, that just puts it into perspective. Even though I wanted to sleep, it was that kind of time. So you must just wind back and uh, just pause things for a while. So thank you. I really do appreciate your understanding. I'm by no means a big channel. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> but it still takes a lot of time and energy to create these, as uh, as uh, lots of people will understand, I'm, I'm sure. So, I'm just generating a small backlog of stories just now, if I can, so that I've got a slight lead. That's all. So thank you all. Secondly, I'd like to thank every anyone who's come over so far from Spotify. I left a message on one story. Um, and I'll leave it in the description of most Spotify stories from now. The point being that Spotify has an equal audience to YouTube, to be f to be honest, and it would be amazing if everyone transitioned over to YouTube because I don't uh, I don't receive or earn anything through Spotify at all. It's a bit of a flaw in the. UK's system at least, but um, I, I'm eternally grateful for everyone who does listen on Spotify, obviously, and any other platforms. It's incredible that you do. I'm very flattered, <laughs> as I am all the time with everyone. But if, but those who who have already said they've come across, thank you. You're amazing. <laughs> I do appreciate it. Um, maybe one day. I would love Spotify to grow also, but I'm prioritizing YouTube because it's where most growth happens and it's where the most engagement can be had for you, the listener, too. So without any further ado, let's go into some of the questions that you've asked. Thank you all for asking them, too, by the way. I will get through them all. I don't know how long this will be, but it'll be nice and sleepy as well. I'm trying just to just apply my more relaxed tone of voice so that you can actually listen to this as you go to bed, should you want. Like bore you to tears with some of the answers, you never know. Okay. Introverted Fox, how are you? One of our top fans slash commenters. <laughs> You're always chatting away, and I love chatting to you back. You've got a few questions, um, but let's start with this one initially. I've been enjoying learning a Scottish word each week from the Scots magazine on Instagram. Awesome. Have you any favourite Scottish words or sayings? Now you will appreciate, I hope, it's very traditional in Scotland to use foul language wherever you possibly can. So most of them I can't repeat, not in, not unless I would like to completely strike myself off the face of the earth yeah. for, for saying them. So no, I can't actually say the majority. However, <laughs> what are some good ones? You have to, it's difficult to think when you probably just use them every day anyway, without realising that they are either Scottish words or the slang. Let me think. What are some words that we would use? Um, 
Ugh, I say wished all the time. That just means be quiet. Excuse the siren in the background if you can hear it. Um, wished means quiet. I say that all the time. Uh, if you're steaming, you're drunk. <laughs> uh, oh, another great one's uh, peely wally. If you're peely, if you're looking peely wally, then you're you're not looking very well. You're looking quite pale or white. Peely just yeah, peely wally just means kind of pale faced or ill, sick. Um, you wee dafty. We see dafty all the time as well. Just obviously, just means you're daft or you're an idiot. I keep I keep wanting to explain them using foul words because <laughs> it's way more natural. I'm not actually particularly foul mouthed. For the most time, I do appreciate language and correct use of specific words. I'm not too. Yeah, I don't turn the air blue too much. Hmm. Is there any more? It's another one for drunk, but uh, no, I said Stephen. Bluetard, that's it. If you're bluetard, then you're also drunk. And th th this this one's gonna make no sense to anybody, so I I dare not even explain it. But it's uh, it always makes me laugh if I hear somebody say it. But your da sells Avon. Just YouTube it if you're if you're wanting to be curious. Your da, as in your dad, your father, your da sells Avon. I'll leave the rest up to you. Okay, next question from Rachel Belk Moyer. I hope I pronounced your name right there. I'm curious if you listen to your own stories as you fall asleep. How did you first discover sleep stories? And where do you draw inspiration from? I hope you get the rest you need. Thank you, Rachel. I appreciate that. Do I listen to my own stories as I fall asleep? Now, yes, I do. And it's not for any narcissistic reasons. <laughs> I don't mind saying this, but... I, d I don't even find my own voice particularly distinctive when I listen to it. So I can completely tune out that, in fact, it's me. So yeah, effectively, I mean, I obviously create the stories in the style that I do because it's the kind of stories I I would like to listen to. A pretty mellow voice, nothing too obtrusive or brash. Uh, female or male, doesn't really bother me. Uh, it's just the kind of the tone in which it's delivered. So yeah, I do. Uh, sometimes I, I need to make sure that they are okay for a start. I do listen to them kind of, like, uh, when I create them, but I've got a system now where I can rely on that they are as required. Um, sorry, I'm just I'm gesticulating while I'm talking. I think I hit the mic there, sorry. So yeah, I, I do listen to them. Uh, I do sometimes wish there were other, other creators out there that, that would kind of tick the same boxes for me. That there will be. There'll be people that I've not discovered at all. But I do find that even the majority of the, the most popular stories or um, storytellers do have quite a distinctive voice and it's quite loud normally as well. Um, so still I kind of satisfy my own brief for that reason. So how did you first discover sleep stories? And my mum, she probably introduced me to the fact they existed. She listened to them first because she's struggled with sleep for, for many years as well. I think we've got the same brain. It's a good and a bad thing. So she introduced them to me just I think through YouTube or a couple of apps that are very popular. I started listening to them first. They worked quite well and yeah. Over time, you become quite accustomed to using them, and I don't want to say need them, but I enjoyed them. I did enjoy them. And where do you draw inspiration from? I've been lucky enough to have travelled a lot around the world, and travelled most of Scotland by now. I've been to a lot of the corners and a lot of the little places, so ultimately I have plenty memories and plenty plans 
to draw inspiration from. Uh, imagery, although my vocabulary should always be growing, like I've, I've got no shortage of imagery in my mind, quite a vivid imagination. So it tends to be trips that I've been on or places that I'd like to go. And because I've seen a lot of the country, there's no shortage there. Next question from Michelle Heatherness. So lovely name. <laughs> I was expecting this one. Will you ever show your face? And can you describe yourself a little? <laughs> well, will I ever show my face? I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet. Probably not soon. It depends on the growth and the speed of growth of how the channel uh, goes, I guess. The, the main reason I would be reserved for now is that I appreciate that when it comes to stories and having things that intentionally stimulate your imagination, it's probably more important for you to generate your own person. When you hear my voice, I want you to picture who you want to picture. As soon as you add a distinctive visual into it, when it comes to sleep stories, it can just change the identity a little bit. So I think it's, whenever I've listened to people, whether or not it's, it's sleep related or not, I enjoy voiceovers because then it's, it's just the person that you want to picture. And that can be quite important. It's like when you read a book and you're being described a character, but then, they, but then some producer makes a film about that book and you go, well, that's not who I saw. It just changes the way that you've perceived that story. That being said, I may, or at least I might, I might have another channel where it is possible to, to see as well. But it just depends on if the channel grows arms and legs and I choose to go with slightly different ideas alongside what is currently happening. Or maybe also if I would show my face, I might not show everything. I might keep it vague. An idea I have coming soon is to maybe use a silhouette as the persona. A live silhouette, it will be me. It's just an idea, because I have many ideas, <laughs> which I, I think there's a question later that I might answer with that. So can I describe myself a little? I'll keep to the very basics, just so you can still picture who you want, but I am, uh, well, yeah, I'll tell yourself, I'll tell you a little bit about me then. Um, I'm, I'm six foot two, I'm kind of dirty blonde hair. I've been told I'm relatively good looking. <laughs> wink, wink. No, I, I'm not. I'm not too ugly. If that makes any difference. Um, <laughs> I'm, you know, tongue in cheek with that. Don't worry. I'm not. I'm not being serious. But, a uh, yeah, pretty um, medium to large build. Um, I look after myself. I'm, I'm quite fit. I do a lot of exercise, uh, gym, kind of crossfit. Uh, what else? Kind of rosy cheeks. Fairly, fairly lean. <laughs> Blue eyes. Um, kind of medium tone of skin. I'm not too pale. I'm not typically Scottish pale, to be fair. Yeah, that'll be enough. That can, that can be what you work with. Okay, next question now. Mary Lynn Diamond. What a beautiful name as well. I'm curious about knowing more about how you discovered stories to go to sleep. Was it an extension of having stories read to you as a child? Well, to follow on from Rachel's question, stories to go to sleep was probably brought in through uh, my mum first. Just, just that concept, the fact that they, they exist in the modern day, in a sense. We did, both me and my sister, uh, I've got one sister, she's older, it was, we did, we did get read stories as a child, of course. <laughs> um, wouldn't say it was directly related. Uh, but the concept of being soothed to sleep with stories has, is as old as it comes, isn't it? Um, 
But no, it was mainly just being brought in through through kind of YouTube and Spotify and then just deciding that through encouragement from other people that, oh, Sam, you actually have a lovely voice for that kind of thing. You should definitely do it. And that was that came to fruition at the same time as having many other things on the go as well. Just realise that unless you move with it and actually do it, then obviously nothing's ever going to happen. So that was how it actually uh, started. Another one from Introverted Fox. How did you get onto NLP? For anybody that doesn't know, that is Neuro Linguistic Programming or Neural Linguistic Programming. Do you use it outside of your business, in everyday life, uh, stories, etc.? And if so, how? Have you studied hypnosis as well? Right, well, NLP is, uh, again, just a brief definition for those who may not be overly familiar. I'm sure, I'm sure many of you are. I think it's probably the nature of uh, why you may be listening to me in the first place. NLP put really briefly, because uh, it's incredibly interesting, it can go as in-depth as you as you have time for. It's it's a practice of just connecting with the mind, and it's it's based around the concept and the science, because it is, it is very real. It's not really a debate, it's more just, it's understanding this is how the mind works. The, the mind and the, and the subconscious in particular is perfectly elastic, we all have habits and things that we do, myself included, that we've got, we've been, we've ingrained into ourselves. It's, the, it's habits that we've adopted, whether they're good or bad, that have hardwired circuitry within our brain. Or we feel, sorry, I, I should re rephrase that because that's exactly the point. We feel we've hardwired it. It feels hardwired because of how repetitive our cycles are neurologically for example if we if we get anxious obviously there's particular parts of our brain neural pathways which have become so strong with the, with that particular subject that creates that feeling that we feel like it's part of us it can't be changed this is who we are blah 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 so the, the practice of NLP is to actually retrain ourselves to understand that those pathways are fluid, they are elastic, they can be shrunk, they can be grown. So to actually answer the question, <laughs> how did you get onto it? Well, a couple of years ago, just as myself and my business partner started our business, he has he had been studying this for a long time. And I knew very little. Curiosity was as much as I had. And a history of, like many of us do have, of um, kind of psychological trouble. <laughs> Again, not particularly the best phrase, but yeah, a curiosity resulted from that. Uh, so he taught me everything. He taught me everything and together we created our own diploma based around it, but using our own solid interpretation and our own uh, practices. That's exactly how we've created what we what we have. But yes, NLP is at the heart of that. So that's how I got into it. Do you use it outside of your business in everyday life? Yes, largely subconsciously these days. And I'm very pleased to say that like many of us who use it, there was a time where it had to be very, very conscious because it was so unfamiliar to use the concepts in the first place that you forget and you get you get frustrated because you just find yourself back at square one. But for a long time, for a good year or, or, or more, I say a long time. It was constant though because it was part of the it was part of my daily work, literally. So for a good year and a half or more, it was, it was conscious. It was constantly there. But thankfully now, because the last two or three years has been the most transformational time of my life, I don't have to actively think about it anymore. It's just kind of part of my fibre. I am way more content 
and happy and at peace with the things that kind of bother me and have bothered me um, without going into detail yes it's it is still used but just not on a on a as conscious a level how well um, I've made no apologies by having gratitude at the top of the list um, I've I've let go of any real financial goals. That's been a huge release. I do still have a few, but um, regardless of the growth of everything in the last year or two, business and everything else in my life, I've been the poorest financially I've ever been for since I was a teenager. And I've by no secret been the happiest. So just through gratitude and really honing in on what is actually my priority and reinforcing that. I've I've got I've used NLP to actually <laughs> arrive at such a more peaceful place. Have I studied hypnosis as well? I haven't actually studied hypnosis. Again, it is it's part of our utilizing certain elements of it has been part of our practice, but no, I, I haven't studied it. It's it's eternally interesting, naturally. But it might be on the card still, yes. The next question is from Miss Patterson. <laughs> what did you do before this? Well oh, how long have you got? <laughs> Well, to be fair, I, I, this is a genuine disclaimer as well, because, you know, when, if and when people do ask me, I don't tend to talk too much, believe it or not, about me. Um, spend a lot of time just learning about everyone else. Uh, it sounds like a long list, but it's an interesting list. Um, well, when I left school, I'm, I'm 28 now, by the way, I'm 28 years old. When I left school, I studied music at the University of Edinburgh. I did that for not very long, maybe a year or two. Uh, enjoyed performing. Um, blues and jazz was at the heart of that. And found myself going into, like, it seems to be the heart of everything, isn't it? A financial hole. I uh, realised that there was unlikely to be sustainable income through music. So then I went back to chefing because I'd done that kind of through school as well as here and there in between studying and work. So I, did, so I went back to chef for a small while. Uh, and that took me to work in France uh, over a winter, which was amazing. Tough, but amazing. And then the next phase was uh, studying engineering to go offshore out in the North Sea here, the area between Scotland and Norway is, uh, I'm sure half the world has heard Scotland's argument for oil, um, regardless of your slant on that. I'm, I'm perfectly neutral, believe me. Uh, so yeah, I, I studied to go out at sea, so I did instrumentation engineering, and that was effectively me for five or six years, so I was away for three or four weeks at a time. Uh, off on the rigs, met some incredible people. It was a very interesting time. It wasn't for me in the long term. Uh, too much detriment to home life. And a very brief stint doing personal training, just because physical fitness has always been an enthusiasm of mine. I have so many enthusiasms. I would say I've got a lot of passions, but passion is a next level thing. I have passion for things, but enthusiasm in in so many areas. <laughs> so, I looking after yourself, cooking, uh, playing music, you know, uh, writing, creating anything. That's that's where I get a lot of satisfaction from. And obviously, bringing us right right up until today, uh, still enthusiastic about uh, helping people reach better places. And yep, yeah, snooze with Sam. This this was one of many little side projects for a while. Uh, it's now become quite a big focus because I have great ambition for this. 
I personally believe there's no reason that this, the channel, cannot do very well. <laughs> I, ho I hope you agree. I'm, so many of you have said, and which is wonderful, it genuinely is wonderful. Um, I, I would love this to grow exponentially. Uh, yeah, it would be it would be phenomenal. The next question is from Rebecca S. And it's a cracker, it's a really good one, this. Is there a poet or writer specifically you think has impacted your writing and audios? You have great imagery in your stories. Thank you. That's very sweet of you to say, Rebecca. I appreciate it. I can't agree with you, but I'm flattered, regardless. Now, this is a good question because I'm sure a lot of people who know me well would would say this is typical, but I couldn't... I couldn't possibly put myself relating to the like some of my favourite writers because I am I am nowhere near where I would love to be linguistically one day. So when I say take in, in yes, of course, take in, inspiration. But if I say I'm inspired by them, I, I feel like I'd be comparing myself to them. Obviously, it's completely not the case. However, yes. Some of my favourite writers. I don't mind saying this either. Uh, that this, the the Dark Materials trilogy, was a, a Philip Pullman series, extremely famous, a uh, huge, huge book series, for you know initially designed for teenagers, but I I have to say. That that was just the most incredible time, when I was reading those three books. I took my time with them as I tend to do. I don't. I don't rattle through books necessarily. I, I've read all three over about f three or four months. But, but those stories and the way he writes, is so wonderfully eloquent, but easily digestible. Throughout the whole series, that I've I'd never felt more involved in a story before. So, that. I, I believe has impacted the way I write. Not that it's the same, or I'm trying to replicate it. I couldn't possibly. It's phenomenal. I'm always, always trying to learn and expand writing. Um, the very nature of, of obviously writing short stories quickly is that, no, ultimately they are not as high a quality as I would like. I try, but sometimes I'm, I'm writing these stories in my car, when I've got an hour and a half, like I, I try and invest in in them, but I just I just I literally there are not enough hours in the day. Like if I try and take longer, that's what happens earlier. Like I said, I end up being awake for twenty four hours. So by by comparing them, what well, they're not com being compared, are they? Yes, it's impacted it, but by no means a direct direct impact, as it were. Another wonderful book, actually, which. <laughs> Incidentally, because it was before it was created. It was way before it was made into a TV series, which I didn't watch, to be honest. Uh, Neil Gaiman is a phenomenal writer as well. Uh, and American Gods was the first book of his that I read. And same, that was uh, that was about eight 800 pages of the fastest book. I, I completely devoured that thing because again it was it was a perfect way of making a really really interesting fascinating imagery based story a complete alternate reality that actually coincided with reality which is why it was such skill in writing it uh, that floored me that thing it was a, it was an incredible book as well so I just think of the way that they wrote and the way that they kind of got images and ideas across to you. And sure, I'm, I'm inspired by that. Uh, but I can continue to be inspired and keep learning, because I've got a lot to learn. Somebody else I would like to mention as well. You mentioned a uh, poet. My Auntie Liz uh, was a poet. She passed away three, three years ago now. Uh, yeah, she was a published poet, very wonderful woman, a phenomenal brain. 
and the most fascinating person. She had a way of making every single word she said and every sentence have weight behind it. Even if it was just a, a casual remark, she would choose her words carefully and let them sink in, let them hover for a while. It, she, she spoke with poetic patterns and and volumes and, and not not in a not in a pompous way just in a full on sincere appreciation for the for the language that she was using incredible she she was the funniest woman ever as well uh, she's deeply missed the next question is from Tara Lee a patron lovely lady would you share a few favourite holiday traditions? Now, I saw this question and I thought, do I have any? <laughs> um, but then, they may be small, tiny little things. Uh, it's maybe just the nature of our family. We've moved around the last wee while, so there's, there's, there's nothing like geographically traditional about what we do. We'll all try and get together, obviously. Um, family traditions being just, just cook, <laughs> go and cook, help, help mum, create all forms of lovely, delicious things, um, at least one, like, good wintry walk, see, it's usually on the cards, a bit of fresh air is, is the best medicine, I think, when you're especially in the wintry blues where daylight's so, so slim, uh, just get out in the nature. I think a personal little tradition would probably be just trying to acquire some kind of Christmas cake, even if it's not necessarily homemade, even though mum, mum does tend to make one every year. Uh, we've got a supermarket or a shop over here. It's a European brand, it's called Lidl's or Aldi both the same kind of shop but just slightly different takes on it uh, every year they, they bring all their like seasonal food in and <laughs> it's ridiculous they they have stolen cake and it's cheap and it's phenomenal it's like marzipan running through the middle of quite a light fruity cake with icing and sugar on the top I, I, I guess I tend to buy one of them every single year that's probably about as traditional as I get <laughs> Um, I tend to be working a lot over Christmas too, always have done, even when I was offshore, so would quite often be away on Christmas. So no real traditions, no. Just the wholesome stuff. <laughs> the loved ones and listen to some nice music. The next question is from Sue Gold. Hi, thank you for your stories. Have a good break. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Sue. And thank you for listening. Where do you live now? Cheers, Sue. <laughs> I live in Glasgow. I have lived in Glasgow for about six or seven years now. I've lived in various places, Edinburgh included, Falkirk, small town in between the two. Um, yeah, Glasgow. In a little place just north of the West End called Rock Hill got a wee house with a garden and a double garage to keep the cars and the bikes. <laughs> By the way, I've got uh, motorbikes and uh, some vehicles, but it's just a hobby. It always has been. It's always been a detriment of mine as well. I'll, I'll be poor as hell, but, <laughs> but at least I'll be motorbikes in the garage. But hey, you've got to have things that float your boat, don't you? So, so yeah, I'm Glasgow-based. Got two questions left. Uh, this one is from H G. Um, do you have a favourite story of your own? That's a good question. Mm, probably, but f maybe for different reasons than somebody else's might be. Uh, because I write them, there might have been times or particularly memorable things that happened in the creation of them. So one that comes to mind. Purely for, like, the editing of this one was, was really enjoyable for me. Uh, Isle of Skies Underwater World. 
not a hugely popular story, but when creating it, um, I, I used sounds that I've captured anyway, but I, I edited them in such a way that you plunged underneath the surface of the water, and to create this kind of white water motion noise throughout the majority of it. And I loved that, that that's my kind of background noise. So I really enjoyed that. And I guess, again, like, it, it wasn't particularly popular and that's absolutely fine. It's it's not, it's not a big deal at all, but uh, I loved writing the North Coast 500 series. I, underst I do understand why they weren't necessarily popular um, compared to others, but I loved writing them. I guess they were slightly lighter hearted and that was the intention, introduce a few characters, a bit of humour, uh, and and yeah, actually since I've, I've kind of combined them all to make the, the sleepy journey through Scotland, there are elements of writing in there that I've, I've completely forgotten about and I actually love. I think they're, they're really, really good. Um, not, yeah, it might just be one of those that not many people ever do listen, and that's absolutely fine. This creation for the sake of creation. So I, I do really enjoy them, actually. Uh, some, something somebody said to me recently, actually, is, oh, it was a comment. It wasn't somebody, something said, it was a comment. You know, it's, they enjoy it when put a bit of humour. It's an interesting point because it's not it's not deadly serious these stories but but you've got to I've got to personally reel in <laughs> my sense of humor a bit because I understand that if you laugh when you're trying to go to sleep it's quite distracting however like I'm not saying I'm a funny guy but people laugh at me so I can't be that unfunny it's I'm constantly having to just uh, I try and tone down that element of my character to create these. It's difficult. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm a complete wind-up in uh, in day-to-day. -day. Uh, I'm, I'm more of a if you if you don't laugh you'll cry kind of person, especially when you're really busy. So, so I'm just always taking the piss, always. And I love to make people laugh, and I love to laugh myself. So. When there's been stories that have elements of humour in them, I really like that as well, because it engages me and engages my brain more, and I can try and put... It's never going to be as funny written down, or not, not the same kind of jokes. Uh, but it's enjoyable putting humorous edges into stories. I think that's funny, and it is fun to make. And the North Coast has a few of them. There's actually a story coming up soon that also has a couple. It's, it's a Harry Potter related one, so it's a bit lighter hearted too. Okie dokie, last but not least, the final question for now. And my voice is drying out like a sandal in the desert, so I'm gonna wrap this up soon because I'm needing a drink or something. Non alcoholic, I promise. It is 12.44 pm, so that would be quite frowned upon by anybody, especially my mum. Manic Expressionist. That's quite the name. I'm not going to read into that one too much. <laughs> Love everything that you do. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Uh, that's very kind of you. It really is. What plans do you have for the channel? And where do you see yourself in the next few years? <clears throat> what plans do I have? I'm always developing new concepts for where to take anything, whether it's this channel or something else. So the basis of the channel was, is going to remain the same. That's, that's what I enjoy and it's what I know you love, it's why you're here. There may be identity shifts as in image, uh, appearance, editing style, the way in which I put myself across. Um, evolution is natural and it's something that I can't help but focus on anyway just because that's how anything grows. That's why this exists. It's not because I thought of an idea and it stayed there. Like You move with things. So, like I mentioned earlier, I may, I may integrate me 
somehow into it. I believe that it might help growth in some in some ways. Um, but it may it may be I might create the mystical figure. <laughs> like like I mentioned, maybe a silhouette. But no, I'm gonna I one day hope in the next couple of years, like I genuinely would love this to be my full time commitment. There will always be other things going on in the background, but if I could create this as my day to day kind of work, hobby, enjoyment, you know, this is this would be this would be the dream for me. Isn't that surprising? Somebody that creates for fun. You know, wouldn't doesn't everyone creating wish that, uh, but if that was possible, and there's no reason it can't be, like, I can calculate what needs to happen technically for that to be the case, and it's not enormous, it's really not enormous, um, and then I would love for this to be pretty much my sole responsibility, because then, then I, I will be, I can be a writer, effectively, it sounds daft to say that. I'd never have thought that was possible. Never ever. And as a result, I could I could give people around me everything they deserve. Um, I don't need much. I mean that. I've had I've had more than I do now materialistically, uh, money wise and so on. I don't need much. But I I know so many people around me that that could benefit um, patrons especially will understand what I mean by that so that that's why that's why I see I would love for this to grow to the point where it is my job effectively but it would be unfair to call it a job because I love doing this I love writing it's so satisfying creating anything has always been satisfying uh, right, that about wraps it up for today, I, I think. Hopefully you might have used this to go to sleep, so if you have fallen asleep by now, good night, <laughs> sleep well, and I hope you look forward to hearing even more stories. There's plenty in the pipeline, I've already got, to be specific, I've got two, uh, two with more to come, and... You'll have a new one uploaded very shortly. In the meantime, as always, just please everyone look after yourself. Um, as a little parting message of, of wisdom. I, I know every single person listening just now will have goals. They'll have priorities. They'll have a completely unique life. Every single one of you will have a unique set of, dare I say it, challenges that they're facing, as well as strengths that you have to your name. Never undervalue those strengths. Use them, even if they seem tiny, tiny things. They only seem tiny. The reality is always the opposite. Focus on the strengths that you have, and so many incredible things are possible as a result. I'm living proof of this, and that's not because I'm anything special. Have a lovely sleep, everyone. Or have a lovely day if you listen to this in the daytime. I hope you've enjoyed it. We'll have another Q&A at some point in the future. Uh, I love doing this, not because I like to talk about myself, but it just it stimulates the creative bit in me, gets my juices flowing, uh, ideas and so on. And thank you all for engaging in this. I'll just leave you with a little bit of ambience just to see out the the evening or the day. Take care, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Speak to you very soon indeed. <laughs>